So we're going to go ahead and talk about Hooke's Law. So Hooke's Law deals with springs. And what Hooke's Law tells us is that the spring force is directly proportional to the spring constant times the displacement. So this deals with good old springs. So I'm going to go ahead and define a couple of things. So FF is the spring force. And that is going to be measured oftentimes in newtons. Um, or any units of force would be fine. Um, K is going to be called our spring constant or force constant. So this just tells us the stiffness of a spring. So it basically just tells us how stiff a spring is. So for things like a slinky, like a slinky might have a K value of around one, um, excuse me, um, one Newton per meter, while something like a car suspension, which in a car you need pretty stiff springs, um, that may be like something around like a million um, Newtons per meter. So it will just kind of like vary. Cool. And delta X is going to be our displacement of the spring. So how much the spring has shifted from equilibrium. So it's displacement from equilibrium. And sometimes when you see Hooke's Law written, they'll just write it as Kx instead of like delta x, but know that it means how much it's been displaced from equilibrium. Cool. So the negative sign is just a mathematical way to say that the spring is a restoring force. Is mathematical way way of why a spring is a restoring force, or it kind of just says like springs are a restoring force. And what I mean by restoring force is that is any force where things want to go back to equilibrium. So anytime things want to go back to equilibrium, that is what a restoring force is. Um, and I should say a mathematical way of explaining um, why a spring is a restoring force. Cool. Um, and again, K is just like a constant for certain springs. So if it's a really stiff spring, it's going to be big, a really like slink spring type thing that's easy to move, that is going to be like something like a slinky. Cool. So let's go ahead and solve some problems involving this. Um, so I will go ahead and scroll to my good old problems. Oh my goodness, this is so fun. So we're going to go ahead and do number one first. So we have a 30 centimeter spring um, with a spring constant of 80 newton meters. So that's going to be the K value. Has a mass of four kilograms attached to it. The spring is stretched 60 centimeters vertically and is then released. Calculate the acceleration of the block the moment it is released. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the spring. So it is 30 centimeters long, that spring. Cool. And then we have a four kilogram mass attached to it. Great. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, so it's all like an equilibrium right now initially, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch this good old spring. So I want you to think to yourself, what way is the spring gonna wanna go? Well, it's gonna wanna go back to equilibrium, so it's going to want to go back up. Cool, um, good to know. Um, and it is stretched 60 centimeters from its original length. So we know this total length is going to be 90 centimeters. So that's just one thing to know. Cool. I'm going to go ahead. Oftentimes we want things in meters. Um, so let's go ahead and put it all in meters. So 30 centimeters is what? 0 0.3 meters. 60 centimeters is 0 0.6 meters. 90 centimeters is 0 0.9 meters. Cool. So let's go ahead and draw our free body diagram because that's always our first step involving Newton's second law. Um, so we have the spring force is going to pull it back upwards, and we have gravity pushing it downwards. Cool. It's not on a surface, so no normal force. There's no strings attached to it, so no tension force. Spring force is a little bit like tension, but it is a different force. Cool. I know force of gravity is 40 Newtons. Great. So let's go ahead and draw our coordinate system now. 
So we know this problem is just taking place in the y direction, and we'll say upwards direction is positive. And we want to find that acceleration in the y direction. So let's go ahead and set up f net y. So f net y is going to be equal to all the forces in the y direction. So in the y direction, we just really have fs and fg. So I'm going to set f net y equal to fs minus fg. Cool. So f net y, we have, uh, this is y, ma equals spring force. Okay. One thing I didn't really talk about with spring force is this is the equation for it, negative k delta x. The negative sign is there to tell us we are dealing with a restoring force where it always wants to go back to equilibrium. I always ignore that negative sign when I solve problems and just use my free body diagram. So for all intents and purposes, I'm going to just treat this as positive k times delta x. So I'm just going to plug in kx here minus fg, which is 40 newtons. Okay, so the mass we know is 4, acceleration we want to find. k is the spring constant or the stiffness of the object. That we gave us is 80, um, and that's what? Newtons per meter. Displacement, so that's how much it's been stretched from equilibrium. So let's go ahead and look at this. It looks like the displacement in this case is 60 centimeters or 0.6 meters. So that is going to be our displacement. So 0 0.6 meters uh, minus 40. I just put the units in because I think it's good to keep track of sometimes. So meters and meters cancel. Cool. And so we're just left with units. And that matches up. Like spring force should be in newtons and FG should be in newtons as well. So 80 newtons minus 40 newtons. Cool. Oh my goodness. We are left with, um, let's see. Oh my goodness. I did a silly mistake. Oh yeah. 80 times 0.6 is what? 48 newtons, um, take away what, 40 newtons, so 4a, do some funnel math, 48 minus 40 is 8, and then 4a equals 8, so then a will be 2 meters per second squared. Cool, and this turns out to be a positive number, which makes sense. This spring system is going to want to accelerate upwards at 2 meters per second squared because it's pulled down. If it was pushed up, the opposite kind of situation um, would essentially happen. Cool. So let's go ahead. Um, if you feel great on that, feel free to jump into some practice problems. But I'm going to do one more video on here um, with a spring system on a ramp if you want to follow along. Cool. So for our next problem, we are going to go ahead and deal with um, a block. I'm just going to erase some of that stuff above. Cool. You know, they do have like handy dandy editing you can do, but no need to do that when we can just chat. Uh, cool. So we have one more picture. So we have this two kilogram block. Okay, it's pressed against a spring force of constant 1400 newtons per meter. So again, that is K. Okay, the spring and block are at rest at the bottom of, the, of a ramp inclined at a 60 degree to the horizontal. Find how much the spring is compressed from its equilibrium length. Ignore the L minus X on the picture below. Okay, so let's draw everybody diagram. So we have this two kilogram block. We will say, you know, gravity acts on anything with mass. So force of gravity in this case is what? 20 newtons. Cool. And then we have normal force pushing up. That's surface pushing up. It doesn't say anything about friction. So let's just ignore friction. I should have said frictionless in the problem. Um, cool. Then we have the spring attached to the block. So I want you to think to yourself, what direction is the spring going to push or pull this object? So if I look at this two kilogram object, the spring is going to want to push it up the ramp. In this case, the spring force is going to push upwards. Cool. So now let's go ahead and set up our coordinate system. So I'm going to say this is the y direction, and we are going to say this is the x direction. Um, and I'm going to say up the ramp is positive, and then like parallel to the ramp is the x direction, and perpendicular to the ramp is the y. So let's go ahead and look at our forces. Fn looks like the y direction. Spring force is x. Uh, Fg is both. So let's go ahead and split Fg into its x and y components. Okay. So we know this angle theta is going to be 60 degrees. So this is going to be Fgy, which is going to be what? 20 cosine of 60 degrees, which is going to be 17. No, no, no. 20 cosine of 60 is going to be 10 newtons. See, we all make silly mistakes. Okay. So this is 10 newtons. And then Fgx is going to be 20 sine of 60 degrees, 
which is going to be 17.3 newtons. Cool. So now when I'm starting to think about solving this problem, I'm going to just redraw my free body diagram up here. But we're going to think about it as Fn. We have spring force going up. We have Fgx going down. And we have Fgy. So this free body diagram I'm going to highlight, but this is essentially the one we're using for our solving purposes. Okay. So now let's look at it. We want to find how much a spring is compressed. So that's dealing with a force in the x direction. So let's go ahead and set up F net x. So F net x is equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction. So we only have two forces in the x direction, just Fs and Fgx. So F net x is going to be equal to Fs minus Fgx. Cool. So F net we know is equal to Ma. Spring force is going to be K times delta X. FGX is force of gravity in the X direction. So that we found was negative 17.3. Cool. Let's start plugging things in. So mass we know is 2. Okay. What is acceleration in this case? Think about it to yourself and then check back in. Okay. Acceleration in this case, the thing is at rest. It's in equilibrium. So acceleration is just going to be 0. K is... 1400 delta x we want to find minus 17.3 cool so 2 times 0 we know that is 0 equals what 1400 delta x minus 17.3 cool um, let's do some good old math and I go ahead and solve this and I get delta x to be 0 0.012 meters or that would be, what is that? 1.2 centimeters. Cool, so it's not compressed too much, but just a little bit. And one thing I like to think about, because it's not moving in the X direction, we know spring force and FGX are balanced. Same thing in the Y, it's not moving up and down, so we know FN and FGY are gonna be balanced. Awesome, thanks so much for watching. A good old spring